Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, April 19th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. One of the many not so popular changes Microsoft implemented with the last patch cycle was to block updates for users running Windows 7 and 8.1 on Intel's and AMD's latest CPUs. Microsoft argued that it would be too difficult to make updates work for older operating systems on these new CPUs and that users should just upgrade to Windows 10. Now, to be fair here, Microsoft did announce this about a year ago. Of course, there are many reasons for users to still run the older operating systems. And for these users, if they're using these seventh generation CPUs, as they're sometimes called, they now will no longer receive any updates at all. To remedy the situation, an enterprising developer wrote a patch that will disable Microsoft's CPU check and allow users to still update. The patch alters the details that check for the CPU version, so it's relatively straightforward and it allows users to continue to use older operating systems on these new CPUs. The patch has been released to GitHub as open source, so you can verify that there is no additional evil payload. But of course, there is a chance that running the older operating system on the new CPU will cause problems, which is after all what Microsoft suggested when it announced last year that it would no longer provide updates for these CPUs. And talking about patches, more reason to apply last month patches quickly. One critical update addressed CVE 2017-0199. This vulnerability, which turns HTA links in Word documents executable, has already been exploited by Tridex in a weekend before the patch was released. But uh, now it is even more approachable due to a detailed blog post explaining in detail how the exploit works and how to create a document to it. The exploit itself isn't really all that complicated and the post is very detailed, even including web server configurations to set the right content type for the document. These instructions will likely make this vulnerability even more commonly used. Remember that this vulnerability was fixed after the infamous shadow broker exploits. We talked a lot about them over this weekend and uh, really CV 2014-199 is actually a lot easier to exploit uh, because it doesn't require an open firewall. The user only has to click on a link. So there's a much larger vulnerable population for this vulnerability that is now readily available than for the NSA vulnerabilities released on Friday. And Windows 10 also introduced a new disk feature that apparently is providing problems for forensics. The feature is Compact OS, a disk compression scheme introduced in Windows 10. Compact OS is an extension to NTFS and allows for the compression of specific files. These are no longer readable for operating systems and tools that do not understand this particular feature. So for example, if you have a disk that's NTF formatted, but some of the files are compressed using this feature, if you're connecting this disk to let's say Windows 8.1, Windows 8.1 will not be able to read these files. By default, Compact OS is only used for system files and even then only if Windows is installed on an SSD drive, but the user or malware for that matter can compress specific files at will via a very simple command line tool. Older versions of Windows uh, do have similar compression features, but the compression algorithm is different, which renders them incompatible. German IT magazine publisher Heise took a look at different forensics tools and how they're dealing with this new feature. Well, the quick summary is not very well. None of the six tools Heise tested recognized this feature correctly. Some at least identified the files as compressed or possibly incompatible 
encrypted, which at least tells you something is wrong with the file. And then you could manually try to decompress them while others just uh, treat them as blobs, essentially didn't say anything about them at all. None of the tools was able to index any content within uh, these files. So investigators have to wait uh, for respective updates uh, from uh, these forensics tools. It shouldn't be all that terribly hard, uh, but like anything like that, it just takes time to do that until they figure out how to decompress uh, these files. Currently, there is an open source implementation of the feature available on GitHub, which uh, could be used to investigate suspect files. But of course, this will require labor intensive and error prone manual intervention, or you may just copy these files to a Windows 10 system to decompress them. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.